now we are going to discuss the legions of the vulva first of all we are going to discuss lichen sclerosus also called chronic atrophic vulvitis it is mostly seen in postmenopausal white women develops slowly but it is insidious and progressive treated with topical testosterone progesterone or corticosteroids it is associated with a greater than expected risk for subsequent carcinoma which is about 1 to 4% of cases gross appearances the lesion presents as flat often symmetrical white plaques microscopic features thinning of the epidermis with blunting of the reti ridges there is hydropic degeneration of basal cells there may be dermal edema or collagenization there is loss of melanocytes in the affected area there are scattered band like lymphocytes underlying the abnormal dermis amino histochemistry there is elevation of mib1 index in the basal and parabasal cells now this is the photograph which shows microscopic features of uh, lichen sclerosus now you can well appreciate loss of reti ridges or reti pegs and there is increased collagenization in the dermis the other lesion is squamous cell hyperplasia and lichen simplex chronicus it is seen in adult women it commonly presents with focal pruritus and treated with topical corticosteroids gross appearances they are grayish white plaques which may be odematous and excoriated microscopic features there is thinning of epithelium with hyperkeratosis there is normal maturation there is squamous cell hyperplasia but no significant dermal changes in lichen simplex chronicus there is collagenization of superficial dermis with underlying chronic inflammatory cellular infiltrate now this is the photograph which shows microscopic features of squamous cell hyperplasia which was previously called as hyperplastic dystrophy there is hyperkeratosis which is marked with h and acanthosis which is marked with a and there is inflammatory cellular infiltrate within the dermis which is marked with i now we are going to discuss various cystic lesions of vulva these lesions are generally asymptomatic they can be seen at any age or they may be incidental finding on clinical examination none of these cysts are associated with malignancy surgical excision is curative gross appearances they may be single or multiple thin walled cysts and their size vary from several millimeters in diameter microscopic features in none of these cysts the lining epithelium show atypia epidermal inclusion cyst it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium which is keratinizing there is prominent granular layer it contains soft yellow keratinous material the epithelial lining may be flattened now this photograph shows microscopic appearances of epidermal inclusion cyst the keratinous debris is marked with k whereas the lining stratified squamous epithelium is marked with s now the bartholin gland cyst dilated segment of the obstructed bartholin gland duct it is lined by non keratinizing squamous epithelium transitional epithelium or cuboidal epithelium there is no keratinous debris in the lumen of the cyst now this is the photograph which shows bartholin gland cyst which is lined by squamous epithelium which is marked with s mucinous cyst there is a single layer of mucinous epithelial lining however focal squamous metaplasia can be seen now this is the photograph which shows a lining of mucinous secreting epithelium marked with white m whereas mucinous material is marked with yellow m whereas s shows 
focal squamous metaplasia. Now there is another cyst which is called mesonephric like cysts. There is a single layer of cuboidal to columnar epithelium may contain clear fluid and there is a smooth muscle layer around the basement membrane. The other cyst is ciliated cyst. It is a rare entity. There is a ciliated and secretory columnar epithelial lining. It may show pseudo stratification. There is no surrounding muscle layer. Cellularity of the stoma is almost absent. This is the photograph showing microscopic features of ciliated cyst. You can see cuboidal to columnar epithelium bearing cilia and the stromal cellularity is minimal. Mesothelial cyst. This is a thin walled cyst lined by a single layer of flattened epithelial cells. Periurethral cyst. This cyst is lined by transitional cells. Now why I am discussing these cysts because you can find these cysts anywhere and they are benign lesions and can be asked in your viva questions or in short essay question. Now we are going to discuss uh, certain viral infections of the vulva and the most important is molluscum contagiosum. Now why I am doing this because you should know how to pronounce the word properly. It is a contagious DNA viral disease. It spreads by close contact. Most lesions, they regress spontaneously. Diagnosis is made by cytology of scrapings taken from the papule. Gross appearances, it is a small, smooth papule, usually measuring 3 to 6 mm in size. It has a central depression or umbilication. These lesions are single or multiple but mostly separate. Microscopic features, there are brightly eosinophilic cytoplasmic inclusions with marked squamous hyperplasia. The inclusions appear more basophilic in older lesions. Now, this is the photograph showing microscopic features of molluscum contagiosum. You can well see inclusions which are marked with white color and labeled as inclusions. And in the surrounding area, there is acanthosis written with yellow. Condyloma acuminatum, it spreads by sexual contact. Human papilloma virus 6 and 11 are the most common types associated with this lesion. The lesion turn white by applying 3 to 5 percent acetic acid on colposcopic examination. Usually it is asymptomatic. Most of the lesions regress spontaneously. Their progression to vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia and even to squamous cell carcinoma has been reported. Gross appearances, they are exophytic papular lesions. They are usually multiple and often confluent. Microscopic features, there are chylocytes in the superficial epithelial cells. These are enlarged cells with perinuclear cytoplasmic clearing or halos. There are pycnotic nuclei with irregular membranes. Binucleate and multinucleate forms are common. There is epidermal hyperplasia. There is hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis. There is prominent granular cell layer. Cytological atypia is rarely seen at the base of the lesion. Immunohistochemistry P16 INK4A helps to exclude aggressive human papilloma virus types. Other diagnostic techniques like PCR and ISH. Now this is the photograph which shows microscopic features of condyloma acuminatum. There are papillary structures which are marked with P and acanthosis marked with A and you can well see the cells with perinuclear halo which is marked with yellow circle. Now we are going to discuss an important topic which is Paget's disease of vulva. It is most commonly seen in postmenopausal white women mostly presents with pruritus. Around 15% of the cases are associated with primary breast carcinoma. 
most of the time develops de novo in epidermis or adnexal structures it is slowly progressive disease it is not necessary to be associated with underlying vulvar invasive carcinoma as seen in mammary paget's disease fluorocin is useful to visualize the lesion before excision surgical therapy is local wide excision recurrences are frequent because the disease is clinically more extensive than it is visualized gross appearances the lesion present as a pink to red eczematous patches with white foci due to hyperkeratosis microscopic features there are abnormal cells in the epidermis concentrated in the basal layer but can also be present superficially and in skin appendages the intraepithelial tumor cells are present either singly or in small groups the cells are large with round nuclei often containing large nucleoli there is pale cytoplasm or vacuolated signet ring cells are seen in the underlying dermis adenocarcinoma may be present in about 10 to 20% of cases immunohistochemistry pas with diacetase mucin and alcyn blue positive her2 new positive low molecular weight cytokeratine and cea positive now this is the photograph which shows microscopic features of paget's disease of vulva black arrow points the vacuolated paget cells now why i am discussing this disease with you because most of the time you are asked what are various extra mammary paget's diseases so they are paget's disease of the bone perineum vulva skin axilla scrotum anus and penis this is an important viva question